just Yusuf as well, if you can put the transcript on just to save that as well, just for attendees who are unable to kind of hear, that would be really useful, as in to record the transcript. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few more people yeah, to join. No I can worries. see the, thank you, Yusuf. I can see the numbers are just creeping up slowly. Um, um, when we hit uh, a few more, I will get started. So just give give us a minute or so. Okay, I can see we've got six attendees at the moment. But the numbers are still creeping up a little bit. So just give it one more minute and then we'll make a start. Okay, it is past six o'clock, so I am going to get started uh, on this evening's event. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us um, this evening to talk about uh, the Barton Greenway. My name is Thomas Fitzpatrick. I'm the Transport Programme Manager at the Greater Cambridge Partnership. Um, with me this evening is Lisa. Hi, evening, everyone. I'm Lisa Bloomer. I'm the GCP Project Manager overseeing a number of the greenways, including Barton, that we'll cover tonight. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Alex? Hi, my name's Alex Sargent from WSP. Um, we're the lead design consultants on the Barton Greenway. Uh, and Susan? Hi there, Susan Ledbetter. I work at WSP and assist Alex on the Barton Greenway. Thank you very much. Um, so the format of tonight is that we, uh, Lisa's going to give a kind of general overview of the work that we are doing on the Greenways and the Barton Greenway uh, as, as a whole. And then Alex and Susan are going to take uh, you through the design of the Barton Greenway that is currently out for engagement. Um, in terms of questions, what we ask is that you put um, either your um, question in the Q&A box um, or at the end of the presentation, if you raise your hand, if you have a question, uh, and then our capable uh, assistant, Yusuf, who's in the background, uh, will unmute you and you will be able to ask your question um, to us. So um, we, we took the decision to go all the way through um, the, the presentation to make sure that uh, you have the full context before, um, before we, we go through the questions. So I think uh, I'm now gonna pass over to Lisa uh, to take you through the first few slides. Lisa. Great, thanks Thomas. Yes, evening everyone. As mentioned, I'll give you a bit of a background and context to the Greenways and then talk through where we are with the Barton um, route to date. And then I'll pass over to Alex to talk through the designs in a bit more detail. So in terms of the Greenways, um, they are a network of 12 active travel routes which run from surrounding villages and settlements into Cambridge city centre. Um, and the project is funded through the city deal. The aim of the Greenways is to provide safe, well-connected, active travel links for walkers, cyclists and, where possible, horse riders. In terms of the Greater Cambridge Partnership, so GCP, we report into an executive board um, and the final board approval for the Greenways to continue with development and design was given in December 2020. So since then, we have appointed transport consultants to take forward um, the development of the greenways, the design work, um, sort of technical feasibility and, and surveys, etc. And I've got some more details on that in a moment. Um, but I thought it was useful just to provide the split of the routes. So who's working on which ones? So we have appointed both Atkins and WSP transport consultants. Um, Atkins are working on the north and the south routes, so St Ives, Water Beach, Sawston and Melbourne. And WSP, so my colleagues here with me tonight, are working on the east and the west routes. So Fulburn, Horningsey, Bottisham and Swathams and Hazingfield, Combaton and of course Barton that we're here to talk about tonight. I should also just mention that the Linton Greenway is also part of the network. 
um, but that is being progressed slightly separately through the Cambridge South East Transport Project. So it's running slightly ahead of some of the other routes and parts of that have been constructed to date. So I've had my next one, please, Alex. Thank you. Um, in terms of the Barton um, route, the current position is that the team have um, developed and produced technical concept designs. And that's what we'd like to share with you tonight and what is currently out for engagement. Um, and they follow the route alignments that were taken out for public consultation previously and agreed by the GCP Executive Board. Um, so the team are obviously seeking feedback on those designs to take through to the next stage, so the preliminary design stage. Um, in the background, the team are undertaking a lot of technical work currently. Um, so they're undertaking topographical surveys where they look at levels across the route and sort of impacts on designs, utility searches, um, technical assessment of proposed structures, so any sorts of bridges or anything like that. Um, looking at the sort of environmental strategy, so undertaking a number of surveys in relation to that. Um, highways and drainage design and the approach to lighting across the greenways as a whole, as a network, undertaking a lot of stakeholder engagement um, and focusing on sections for early delivery. So I will come on to that, but we have identified some sections of the routes to be constructed and delivered um, next year, so 2023. And the overall programme for this sort of next stage of works runs through to July next year. So in terms of the overall uh, sort of programme for Barton, um, we're in this current design and investigation stage. So undertaking, as mentioned, a lot of technical work, uh, feasibility studies, surveys, etc., to input into these designs. Next year, we will be looking to um, progress through to preliminary and detailed design. Um, and we have, as mentioned, these early works identified, which are just within highway boundary. So where we don't need any planning consents or any land. So within the highway boundary. For Barton, that includes um, sort of the two ends of the route, really. So the Barton village section um, and then Barton Road and Barton Road through to Cambridge. And Alex will cover this a bit more in his presentation in a minute. Um, and then continuing on into 2024, um, construction of the rest of the route and obviously our wider network as well, the other routes will continue, um, including the sections where we do require planning permission or land or other consents. And the current programme for the Greenways Network is for completion by the end of 2025. So that's the programme that we're working to. In terms of the engagement, um, the engagement period for Barton opened on the 7th of November and it runs for four weeks through to the 2nd of December. Um, it includes obviously our virtual event, our Zoom tonight, so thank you very much for dialing in. Um, we'll also be out at Barton Village Hall in person next Thursday, so the 24th. So myself, Alex, Thomas, Susan and the wider team will be there um, from two till seven next Thursday. And all of the materials are online for the whole four weeks. So we've developed um, an engagement brochure, um, an accompanying feedback survey, and also the technical drawings. So the actual design drawings are all online on consult cams um, now and through for the four weeks. If you'd like to go on there and uh, fill in a feedback survey, that would be great. Um, in the run up to the public engagement, myself and the team have been undertaking um, a lot of a lot of meetings, a lot of workshops, um, meeting with key stakeholders, including parish councils, landowners, network rail, national highways, etc. And the overall purpose of this engagement is that we really want stakeholders and the public to comment on these emerging designs and give us feedback that we can then take through and refine designs in the next stage. So I think that's it from me. So I'll pass over to Alex um, and Susan to give us a bit of an overview of the route and then go through section by section the design proposals. Um, and as Thomas mentioned, we'll take any questions at the end and happy to come back on the slides to those sections to discuss any particular points. So thank you very much, Alex. Thanks, Lisa. So, um hopefully you're all aware sort of broadly of of the um barton greenway route um but here's uh the the tube map that's available online um showing the sort of key key locations and key stops but um probably 
more usefully for the session, I've just overlaid that onto um, you know, aerial imagery. So the Greenway runs uh, from around Cambridge or, or West Cambridge, um, running out along from, from Newnham Road, along Barton Road, um, out to the M11 roundabouts, uh, over the bridge of the M11, uh, across the second roundabout, and then up New Road towards Barton. And then the second leg of the route runs from the New Road Junction um, along the Bridalway, across the um, Bridalway uh, Bridge, across the M11, um, and then out towards Grantchester, so along the Bridalway um, and Coton Road into Grantchester, and then along the Bulk Path over Coton Road, continuing into uh, Grantchester Road, and this orange line here shows one of our interfaces with the um, Hazenfield uh, Greenway, which was um, out for, for public engagement um, a couple of months ago. So uh, some of you may have had some of the materials um, out for there. So um, the orange line shows how it links in with the bog path, um, uh, the Coton Road, and um, it also has a, a secondary link there. So that's just allowing people to get from from Barton to Hazenfield if needed, or um, likewise to, to Grantchester. So opening up as many um, links as possible. So in terms of how that's laid out on the um, promotional material, so it's um, categorized section by section and they correspond with what's available on the on the online survey that you'll find on, on the Consult CAMS um, website. Um, so the, the broad, uh, descriptions of, of what's uh, what's proposed uh, are shown here and, and described and they correspond with the technical drawings as well. So we'll go through each of the sections um, on the technical drawings. So on the Barton Road section, generally a, a three meter carriage, a uh, three meter um, shared use path or separated from, from the pedestrians for pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, that's, that's shown by the blue, um, blue color. So that's all sort of a, a separate shared use path generally. The uh, purple sections are where cyclists will be sharing the road with traffic, usually with um, traffic calming or slow speeds um, to manage the, the safety of cyclists and traffic sharing together. And the green sections are sort of off-road um, paths uh, where it'll be a three metre um, sealed surface with um, a, a separate um, verge where possible for soft surface users like horse riders or, or um, anyone preferring a, a softer surface to a sealed surface. So I'll run through um, each of the sections now. So starting on the Newnham Road, um, Barton Road Junction. So this is actually uh, a separate proposal to the Greenway. So this is a junction upgrade that's being proposed by the County Council separate slightly separate to the Greenways project, but um, dovetailing in, but would um, welcome any feedback on this. Uh, the county would welcome any, any feedback on this proposal um, as, as part of this engagement process. So if you've got any comments on, on this um, proposal, uh, you can fill in the survey on location one um, and uh, there'll be fed back into the county's design team. So. Uh, the county is proposing sort of reconstruction of the entire junction, sort of tightening up. And I'll just see if I can get my laser pointer. There we go. So tightening up the um, the corners of the junction, which will sort of control traffic speeds through the junction. Um, they're also improving all of the uh, existing signals. So those of you familiar with this will know uh, it's very sort of old traffic signals. There's um, some issues with uh, left turners sort of confusing the green light for the cyclists with the green light for traffic. So that sort of full redesign of all of the traffic uh, traffic signal infrastructure at the junction should really improve things. Um, there, there's also a proposal for a um, additional signalized crossing across Barton Road here, which will um, improve things. Uh, as there's no no signalised crossing for anyone uh, on on the junction currently, um, so the footpath, the pedestrian uh, path, and the cycle path will be separated as well, um, and that will continue in. And so, 
at this cut line will um, merge in with the uh, Greenway's proposal. So moving into the Greenway's proposal, um, running along, uh, the general proposal is to widen the existing shared use path um, through sort of um, widening the path as much as possible uh, amongst the trees. So um, detailed surveys are being undertaken. Uh, well, they've been completed, but part of the next design stage will be looking at every pinch point around every tree and seeing exact widths that are available. But the general approach will be to provide a separate facility for pedestrians and a separate facility for cyclists, um, bearing in mind sort of minimum widths for pedestrians um, of, of 1.5 meters um, and desirably um, a greater than 2.5 meter width for uh, cyclists there. Each junction will be reconstructed uh, to provide sort of consistent junction radiuses to control speeds of vehicles turning left into the junctions or turning left out and priority will be given in road marking and surface treatment to the um, cycling and cyclists and pedestrians um, which reflects the changes to the highway code as well so um, each of those will have a raised table as well to increase visibility of, of pedestrians crossing and um, managing speeds there as well so um, that proposal continues along Barton Road. So at the Grantchester Road Junction, you'll see it's um, greyed out, and that's because that portion is being brought forward by the Hazenfield Greenway, uh, just in terms of designs and, and how we've uh, engaged publicly. But if there are any um, concerns raised again, um, they, they can be made, but um, the three metre path continues through, um, through the junction there. So the construction of that's likely to be coordinated. Uh, they won't appear on, on the ground as two separate schemes or anything like that. Um, so the proposals continue through, there we go, continue through. Um, and then as soon as we sort of leave the, the more built up area of Barton Road, we switch to a shared surface. So just reflecting that there'll be sort of fewer pedestrians heading out towards the, the M11 roundabouts. And um, that means it's a more comfortable experience for, for the volumes of uh, pedestrians and cyclists out there. So continuing outwards, the path, the existing path will be widened out to three meters at a minimum. And um, as part of that, the, the speed limit will be changing to 30 miles an hour just to make the experience of the users on the path uh, a bit more comfortable. Um, part of the next stage of design is working out exactly uh, what width changes are needed. Potentially um, the, the carriageway gets narrowed to facilitate that wider path, but that fits in with the um, speed reduction proposals there. So you'll see we continue out towards the M11 roundabout with that three meter shared use path. And as we approach the M11 roundabout, so the proposal is for um, two new signalized crossings of the roundabout and reducing the, um, the, the southbound um, northern arm approach to one lane instead of two. Um, so those of you who have used um, this crossing know that this, this approach is two lanes. So it's, it's quite a long crossing for, for um, pedestrians and cyclists. So Part of that being narrowed down and signalized will mean it's a bit safer for less confident users. Um, so, you know, kids riding to school and things like that. Um, and likewise, uh, on the on the northbound approach. Um, so, yes, moving through that three meter width is kept consistent throughout um, the general speed limits at the roundabout uh, change to 40 as well. So across the M11 bridge, um, we're looking at widening out the um, northern side shared use path. So it's currently a shared use path, but that'll be widened out to three meters. So um, it's quite narrow at the moment. And also the um, existing parapet is quite low. Um, so 
that will be um, raised up as part of these proposals to a more comfortable height and um, make sure that cyclists are, are more comfortable crossing the bridge. Um, part that will be facilitated with um, lane width reductions along Barton Road um, and make use of the, the hard shoulder there as well. And coming up to the M11 northbound slip road, um, another signalised crossing of that junction, which will just uh, give a window there for less confident users who aren't comfortable judging the traffic circulating in the roundabout. They can um, stop stop the uh, or, or call a call a red light with the signal there. Um, So continuing along Cambridge Road at this location, so continuing the path widening um, facilitated mostly through um, lane width reductions where required um, in some locations, you know, ideally we provide a, a buffer um, verge between the carriageway and the uh, cycleway, but in some locations where the highway boundary is quite narrow, um, it, would, it would be a curb separation there. So at the new road junction, the shared use path continues along the northern side here. Um, we're proposing new signalization of the junction, which will provide pedestrian crossings on, on all arms of the junction, and that will allow movements um, between the public right of way, which forms part of the greenway that I, I mentioned before, um, and allows, yeah, so it allows sort of seamless, seamless uh, uh, controlled um, connection between those two, two areas there. Um, the bus stops as part of that. So the, uh, well, it's sort of southbound. Um, the bus stop will be relocated from, from this location out to the other side of Cambridge Road, just to um, keep it out of the way of uh, the, the traffic signals and the queues there. Um, and that sort of brings it closer to the properties as well and ensures that there's connections between the um, schools along New Road and, and the bus stops with signalised crossings. Um, this will sort of be subject to the next stage of technical approvals, which will include um, comprehensive traffic modelling to make sure that the, the traffic um, impacts of the, the signalised changes are fully understood and any cues and things um, managed and, um, you know, made sure that they're not um, going to cause any issues. So we sort of change orientation now, uh, running along Cambridge Road and up New Road. So this is the junction that we just spoke about. So um, the proposal is again to widen out the existing path to three metres um, through um, carriageway width reductions where required. Um, and that continues through. So at this point here, um, we move into a 20 mile an hour zone as you enter the village um, and a new um, zebra crossing and shared use crossing for cyclists, which serves as a point for um, cyclists to be able to, to cross here and then rejoin the carriageway. So this is where the, where the, um, where the greenway transitions from having an off-road shared use where it's got a higher speed of, of 30 miles per hour or, or above into a slower speed village environment where cyclists will be on the carriageway. So we continue along a new road with cyclists now on the carriageway. Uh, there'll be traffic calming um, included in the form of sinusoidal speed humps. Um, so that continues through uh, with, with the 20 mile an hour rondels as well. And continuing through New Road to the Village Green Junction. So at this junction, it's proposed to close um, this arm of the, of the uh, arrangement. So that allows uh, for an additional um, footway through that area. And it simplifies uh, the number of crossings there, which sort of makes things more predictable for um, cyclists. It manages speeds a bit better it reduces the number of conflict points, you know, chances where cars have to, to hit, each, hit each other. And it would be designed in a way to make sure that um, larger vehicles can still navigate um, as needed. So the Greenway continues on the carriageway um, 
along Combaton Road and then rejoining into the existing shared use path out towards Combaton. So, um, yes, so this will dovetail in. So you'll see the, the 20 mile an hour zones shown here on our plan, but actually um, that will be moved outwards uh, because the Barton Village 20 mile per hour zone has just been advertised. So um, that's covered by the green area there. And so where our plan showed the 20 mile an hour zone there, that's actually extended a bit more um, along Barton Road. So those two proposals, um, Will, will be aligned, but um, through through this proposal, which is separate to the Greenway proposal, that will come forward um, separately um, and and sooner than the wider Greenway work. So now we move on to um, section eight or the the bridal way section. So uh, back at New Road here, um, the general proposal well, through, through the, um, the sort of wooded area, we're proposing to um, weave a, a seal track through there um, as far as we can. So that will be subject again to these detailed proposals, which will map out, oh, sorry, detailed surveys, which will map out every tree and we'll work out the, um, the exact width that we're looking at. But um, yeah, we're looking at a sensitive surface there that'll work around the trees and, and not break up around tree roots and things like that. So. Um, that will move through the, the tree area. And then once we're at a wider, with, with just a, a single surface, um, where it splits, um, the sealed surface will just use one of the two um, sides, depending on which will get uh, a wider width for, um, for the users. Uh, so potentially where on the split side, they'll still remain a soft surface sort of um, gravel track for, for anyone that prefers to use that that surface. Once we widen out into the fields, um, it'll generally be a, a three meter sealed surface and a three meter grass verge for, for those soft surface users, which will continue from the wooded area out to the existing bridge. Um, we're proposing to improve the approaches to the bridge, which is sort of broken up a bit. There's a bit of a step up um, from the approaches into the bridge. Um, and if required, any um, surfacing improvements to the bridge as well, just to make sure that's all all stands up to um, to regular use. Uh, the Hazenfield Greenway connects in into here, um, and that will continue sort of that that treatment down towards um, Trumpington Farm. And as we cross the bridge, that continues along to um, the junction with the Bridal Way as well. So on the Bridal Way, we continue into um, into, yep, into uh, Grantchester. So connecting into Pride Away here. Um, so in some locations, a red surface might be proposed, but if the existing condition of the Pride Away is in, in good enough condition, we can kind of leave it alone as much as possible. So at each junction, we're proposing raised tables. Um, where there's existing raised tables, we'll just be tying into those most likely, unless um, there's any need to make changes. Um, but each of the corners will be just tightened up um, so that traffic speeds are, are eased around the corner and visibility is improved. So currently sort of the giveaway points a bit further back and it's a bit difficult to see as you're turning out of the brighter way. So by moving that giveaway line a bit further up, you get better visibility. So turning right out into Coton Road that continues through with traffic carving and a 20 mile per hour zone as you move out into Grantchester. And likewise, coming back in, um, you get the benefit of the traffic carving as a, as a cyclist and connect into the bridal way and the bog path. And then just to point out, as we, cro as we continue along the bog path, um, we come across the crossing of Coton Road. And we're proposing um, just highlighting uh, features, speed reduction features uh, and um, a, a highlighted surface. Um, we won't be proposing any, any speed humps or anything like that as it's, it's quite high speed. It's um, sort of unsafe for, for vehicles 
but um, the main benefit is we'll be re, uh, re, what's the word, uh, realigning the the path. So the existing path comes at this point right along the bend. So visibility is quite limited um, along here. So by moving um, the the crossing points at this location, um, visibility is much better for for the users. So that'll be nice and clear um, and as much visibility as possible for for people crossing um, and that width managed as well. So the crossing continues over Coton Road and the path continues along the bulk path, eventually um, connecting through to run past the tennis club and rejoin Grantchester Road. And that pretty much sums up the proposals. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we can move on to next steps from Lisa and then perhaps on to, to questions if, if there's any Q&A. Great, thanks Alex. Um, yes, yeah, so in terms of next steps, obviously all the feedback that we received during this engagement period will be analysed by the team um, and we'll review that and we'll compile that into a summary report and we'll make that available on our website. Um, we'll also provide a summary of which design changes we, we are going to make and are not going to make and then explain the reasoning for that um, in terms of the engagement results. Um, in terms of the timeline, the next steps are sort of outlined below. Um, we will be aiming to take the Barton route to the executive board in March. Um, so aiming to take it to March and then get a decision on the design changes, um, outline business case, et cetera, um, and ask for approval to proceed to the next stage of design. Um, and as mentioned, concentrating on construction of the early work sections that we've outlined tonight. Um, and then moving on, so developing designs and construct and build. And during all of that, we will be continuing engagement with key stakeholders, landowners and the public as well. So there'll be lots more opportunities for people to have their say as we work through designs and the process. Um, yes, so moving on to those early sections for construction next year, so 2023, and then continuing to construct the rest of the route. Um, and as mentioned earlier, with the current goal for completion of the Greenways network by the end of 2025. So thank you very much. Happy to take questions. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, so if you would like to ask a question, please feel free to use the uh, function to raise your hand, uh, at which point we can unmute you. Um, or alternatively, um, I can see we've got a, a question already to pick up in the um, uh, in the Q and A kind of section. But please uh, type any questions you've got into there if if you if you don't wish to kind of raise your hand or and and ask it. Um, so. Whilst we uh, are waiting for if people have further questions, I think we can have a look at the question that has been asked. Um, so perhaps Lisa, you're probably the best one to come to on this one. Uh, so Mike uh, Stapleton has asked about um, Barton Road near Comberton also needs improvement uh, outside the houses uh, near Long Road, uh, needs to be LTM1. 20 compliant which specifies a three meter path for shared use uh, so really it's just a question uh, on are we doing anything uh, between uh, Long Road in Combaton and Barton itself? Yeah so as part of the Combaton Greenway we are covering this section um, so where you've mentioned at the south of Long Road when you come out um, east along Barton Road we are covering um, that section in the Combaton Greenway actually and we are proposing a new um, as you've mentioned there a sealed track three meters wide um, offline in the fields there so it will be separated from the road in that section and that should link up well that will link up with the recently improved section that then continues on um, to link up to Barton so that should provide a continuous route there but the one section that we're concentrating on is covered by the Combaton Greenway at the the south of Long Road there. Thank you Lisa. Um, okay just going to um, a couple more questions in the chat. Um, so one of them is on um, uh, lighting 
Uh, so Alex will come to you in a second, uh, expand on what we're doing in terms of lighting on the route um, and specifically the section from the M11 to Gough Way is currently unlit. Um, so do you want to just expand on what we're doing in terms of lighting at the moment? What we're looking at? Yeah, so the current proposals are to replicate the existing um, highway lighting. So if it's currently lit, we'll be making sure that um, the, the cycle portions are covered. Um, but it's quite sort of impactful to light new sections and has to be considered more on the, the highway side as well, because if the greenway side's lit, the highway has to be lit and it's quite um, quite an effort, quite, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of infrastructure to put in, um, which will sort of impact the amount of greenway that we're able to put in. So that's the sort of guiding approach so far. Um, that said, it's all of the sections will sort of undergo a risk assessment. So if there's any particular issues like decision points or junction points that, you know, will, will remain a, a big risk, you know, drop offs on the side or, or whatever those risks might be, um, then, yeah, I think we'll need to consider uh, what lighting could be provided if it's if it's solar studs or, or things like that, and they'll get um, uh, fully assessed through the sort of environmental and planning process as well just to make sure that there's no additional impacts to you know uh, protected species like bats and things like that thanks alex i mean i think it's worth just highlighting what we're looking to do on the linton greenway which is uh um, under construction at the moment um parts of which have been been uh, kind of finished we are putting solar studs uh on the ground just to kind of they're not you know they are lighting of one form but they don't really light an area they, they provide kind of way marking um, and that is something that is being considered um, as Alex said uh, for kind of these these sections um, so okay so that was the section on lighting um, I've also got uh, a question from Finley but I think you're saying you're also happy to do this live so um, we can probably unmute Finley to ask the question. Oh, hi there. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah. So um, this is a route I cycle into what cycle into workouts in Toft uh, quite frequently, actually. Um, so in Barton, uh, the plan so far seems to be to build the cyclists so if you get chucked onto the road. Having there is quite a lot of room there that I would have thought you would be able to continue. You know, there's a few parking spaces which don't seem to get used much, and I feel like the design could really just continue the path all the way through Barton. Um, might have a bit of battering around by the duck pond, but it seems not particularly sensible to dump everyone back onto the road, especially when that area gets really snarled up with school traffic. Um, yeah, I kind of, I don't, I, it seems to be that the scheme gets to the bit where you actually really do want to be off the road. You know, it's a bit that's very busy, uh, not straight but everyone gets dumped back into the road. So I was kind of just wondering what the rationale behind that was. So I was going to come to Alex on that, but I, I guess I'll, I'll kind of kick off with, um, so this is kind of the second phase uh, in terms of uh, engagement or, so there was a consultation back in kind of 2020, uh, sorry, 2019, that looked at kind of the original um, uh design uh, of the route and what, what they were proposing and that's kind of what was agreed uh, at that stage um, that said as we've obviously gone forward we have looked at kind of what to consider um, and, and whether or not that's still the right thing um, and Alex I'm going to come to you about whether or not you know what what the teams looked at through Barton um, and provide a bit more of a, a response if possible. Yeah so um, definitely it's not um not not a, not a perfect world you know uh, and it will be less um not as convenient as a completely offline route so um yeah like like thomas says sort of the the brief was already set when it came to us that it would be a a, a more speed managed reduction and um traffic management approach so getting those speeds low enough and um looking at the traffic volumes to see where that sits in terms of um, the new cycle infrastructure guidance, which sets sort of clear guidelines around um, what conditions uh, a sort of safe environment for cyclists would be around. Um, that said, I think um, 
there's always you know room to explore so um i think yeah as a, as a sort of design team we can take that back and, and trace that back and just make sure that there weren't any um opportunities missed in terms of being able to take it offline um yeah but... thanks for that i think um i think what what that i'm thinking about is that it's a very t you have a very strong tidal flow right so if you cycle through there in the middle of the day the 20 mile an hour zone is probably fine if you cycle through there at school less out time it's kind of a zoo uh, i say that because i <laughs> regularly do that and it's always you always are kind of taking your life in your hands a little bit because there's buses pulling in and out there's lots of parents stopping and dropping so the road gets neck down i'm not sure if the road is actually narrower slightly in this design but um combining speed humps a huge number of cars stopping and starting buses bikes it is not a good idea um so i would suggest that you know okay the i guess that's ltm 120 you're referring to is i mean i don't know if the traffic flows were looked at when um it's school let out time and the sort of car movements there because yeah if you cycle through there when it's school time it's not it's not safe at the moment um and also the having the parallel crossing where you kind of are the use the way that people are going to use that is kind of like an unofficial way right because you're going to go halfway onto it and then sort of take a turn and i always find that when i'm cycling around that kind of creates confusion because the expectation of a crossing is that you cross as opposed to kind of go halfway across and jump into the um, middle of the road. So, yeah, I uh, it would be I think it would be uh, strong, um, strong, strongly advised. I think from anyone who's on a bike that that would be you know a bad idea to put people back into the road. I think I, I don't know. If I remember Cam Cycle making a point about this when this was first assessed, but. Uh, was kind of that's the worst place to be on the on the road so yeah i would uh yeah hope well, that gets reconsidered because i just think it's dangerous frankly the design doesn't seem safe yeah yeah it's part, that will part, be part of the challenge i guess with with taking the cyclists off carriageway is the amount of pedestrians in the village environment um compared with the, the offline routes with sorry the the out of town routes with lower pedestrian volumes obviously that's sort of still the the conflict between pedestrians and cyclists as well so it would have to be quite a wide and segregated facility probably if it was um if it was off the carriageway but yeah we can take that away and sort of perhaps as part of the engagement response come with, with a um you know a response that with a with the particular challenges that that are faced and the conclusion of that might be that it is a possibility yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I think, I mean, for, this is the whole point of this process is to, to put a design forward and, and get feedback on it um, and to, to, you know, to understand what, what the views of, of the local community are um, and indeed hear for feedback like yours. Um, so I think we, we have minuted this down. Uh, I know Susan is, is taking notes um, and uh, I also kind of encourage you to, to fill out the, the kind of feedback with, with any specifics around that. I know you mentioned that you felt that kind of maybe around the duck pond it might be slightly more difficult and perhaps you know you have uh, you know specific feedback like that that would help the design team um so i would just you know my feedback is uh, that we're here to listen uh, and um thank you for kind of making the point um yeah is that thank okay you. finley thank you yeah yeah that's fine i mean i've, I've got like 20 other points to make but uh, i will let some other people ask some things don't worry i've I just know that I know this route so well, so I'm just like going through it. But yes, I will let some other people speak first. That's absolutely fine. Um, okay, I've got uh, an, an anonymous um, uh, question in the chat at the moment. Um, is it possible to do it without traffic lights and reduce speeds and all the other restrictions to cars? There have not been any accidents, so it seems rather impactful to car travel. Why are you putting bikes over vehicle traffic? ratio of one bike to about 100 cars at least normally is there not a better use of taxpayers money please note i cycle and walk regularly and i'm not just a car driver i've never had any issues with the current layout um so uh, i guess just um just to high uh, to, to highlight the uh, a strategic level um the the county council and, and other kind of decision making uh, bodies uh, have kind of set out a hierarchy of road users 
Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate what's been said here, but, but kind of pedestrians are at the top of that. And then it's kind of cyclists um, and kind of back to travel. Then it's sustainable travel. Uh, and then it's kind of the cars uh, at, the, at the, the bottom of that. Um, and, you know, the real purpose uh, within the city deal is, is to really encourage as much active travel as possible going into the city. Um, so that's really the, the foundation of why this is is has been looked at um, uh, and the greenways as a whole are being looked at. Um, and, you know, we do appreciate that, um, you know, that does have an impact on on cars. What I would just add to that is we are conscious about the, the impact on cars from the perspective of things like junctions. Um, and therefore, that's why Alex mentioned a number of occasions uh, that we need to do you know, transport modelling um, at certain junctions to ensure that we're not causing you know, significant impact uh, that would be um, massively detrimental uh, to the local environment um, by, by causing you know, lots of tailbacks and things like that. So. Um, I mean, uh, just just to kind of highlight that there is a balance in there, um, but the the kind of rationale behind the greenways is really, uh, you know, to to boost as, uh, and get as many people as possible using kind of active travel uh, means uh, to take their journeys. Alex, is there anything specific that you would add to that? Um, no, sort of only um, to say that a lot of the rationale behind the scheme isn't for existing users; it's for people who aren't currently cycling because you know they feel unsafe crossing the ml11 bridges or you know uh, crossing the new roads um, and, and likewise for those adjacent users like pedestrians crossing from the bus stops to the schools for instance or, or in the village you know there's, there's sort of wider benefits that are built in um, so yeah it's not about prioritizing anyone it's about um, sort of achieving a, a sense of balance because they're very sort of vehicle dominated places uh, at the moment that are causing their own barriers to, to other users. So you, you might say it's currently balanced too far in favor of, of, of vehicles and that needs to be rebalanced. Um, you know, using the example of the M11 bridge where it's sort of got a catwalk for for pedestrians in a, in a low barrier before you feel like you're gonna fall onto the M11 itself. It's, um, yeah, I, I think that's all, all that we're looking to achieve there. Thanks, Alex. Um, so I've still I've got two hands up. So I'm going to come to Ruth and then I'll come back to Finley. So Ruth first, if you don't mind unmuting Ruth. Thank you. Should be unmuted now, Ruth. Yeah. Hello. Um, you're sorry, I didn't. I'm out and about, so I couldn't really type into my phone the question. Um, I'm aware I had quite a lot of your time yesterday, so I don't want to take away from other people. Um, but we do have, um, I'm, I'm from Cox and Hens, for other people, Tennis Club, and we have a meeting next week. So there's two questions that it would be helpful to get your views on maybe ahead of that meeting. Um, one is, um, I think I dropped an email yesterday or today. Um, I think the main, the Cox and Hens are largely supportive, but I think one of um, the concerns or the queries is about the shared use between um, bikes and cars. Um, in terms of two issues. One is that it doesn't slow down the car movements significantly from what they are at the moment, which is about 10 to 20 miles an hour. And secondly, the safety of the cyclists, you know, interfacing with cars. And um, I note that on your plans, it's a shared use path. And I just wonder what the width is and how it's going to differ, because it is actually a very low use, low use load. Um, so how are you going to manage the, the cars and the bikes on the same route? Uh, that's one question. I'll just tell you what the other one is as well, just in case you want to answer at the same time, which is, I think, I can't remember whether you said it was the plans were for it to become an adopted route and where would the responsibilities for maintenance lie um, for that load if it had the sort of different users for the farmer, the tennis club and the cyclists? Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, so I'll come back on the, the last question and I'll go to Alex for, for the first question, which was about the kind of the shared use side. So in terms of um, adoption, we are looking to um, have all of the greenways adopted as maintainable uh, by the, the county council. Um, clearly, um, that that does require a budget and we're in conversations at the moment with the the county council uh, over ensuring there is a budget for for that uh, going forward um 
we are also quite conscious of kind of specific local arrangements. So, for example, where um, uh, kind of farmers need to access or, or indeed, you know, things like uh, the, the Cox and Hens Tennis Club uh, need to access. Um, and, you know, obviously they will be uh, maintained by the county council, but it might we, we are conscious there might need to be certain local arrangements uh, and, you know, we would pick them up in specific conversations with those uh, those kind of groups uh, and, and landowners. Um, so hopefully that helps with that side of the question. Alex, do you want to pick up the point on kind of shared shared use? Yeah, sure. And sorry, I couldn't reply sooner. You, uh, Ruth, I do have your email to, to respond to. But I, I guess in, in general, we've got two options. One is making it wide enough for a car to sort of safely and comfortably pass um, a cyclist or someone walking on the track. Um, and the other is to make it narrow enough so it doesn't feel like it is wide enough. So, um, and that's what's called primary position for for the cyclists. So they'll they'll be riding in the in the centre, and they won't feel like there's enough space to um, pass. So that the vehicle will have to just sort of um, trundle behind uh, until they reach a, a passing place where the width is wide enough. So uh, in the case of the Cox and Hens entrance, it'll be those those pa passing places. So we don't have you know the exact widths of the current path. Um, but it'll all sort of be balanced as a system on how wide the existing path is, um, balancing out the sort of level of disruption that we'd cause by sort of reconstructing it or widening the existing path. Um, and then in terms of making sure, you know, for example, if use of the, uh, of the if vehicle use of the track, you know, differs from cyclist use of the track um, or, you know, where, there's a regular use by vehicles. Um, so that might come at a surprise to, to pedestrians or cyclists um, or where, um, yeah, th th those sort of situations will occur. Um, it, it forms an important part of our risk assessment process. So everything will be subject to sort of thorough risk reviews by us as designers, uh, by external auditors as um, part of the road safety audit. Um, and, and all of it will be sort of widely considered. Um, so the exact widths will be defined in the next stage once we've got that, um, the exact widths of the existing path and um, sort of work out the, the required works. So, I mean, if the existing path was already say four and a half meters, that's plenty of width and, you know, we'd be fine just to seal the whole width. But if that's gonna cause its own issues then we have to look at that a bit more carefully. And we will also look at um, things to, to you know, slow down traffic along that, uh, bearing in mind that obviously there's the access as well. The, um, the routes will be clearly marked. There'll be a whole um, suite of wayfinding, so um, particular and, and sort of branded signs denoting it as a greenway. So it should be clear to all users that it is in use as, as a greenway. Um, so things like road markings to denote cyclists or pedestrians on, on the on the uh, driveway, for instance. Um, so, um, yeah. And so also as part of that, there'll, there'll, there'll have to be a, an implementation plan as well. So to get all the users used to new arrangements and things like that, but they should stand up on their own generally as, as clear, because that's a core part of, of how we design it. It should be just clear to all users at all times, what's happening, what behavior they're expected to, to take. Are they expected to wait? for cyclists and trundle behind them are they expected to try and squeeze past or or whatever that is and I'd thank say you very much they, sh they shouldn't squeeze past you know that yeah, that, yeah. That, that won't be a, a design outcome we're looking for no squeezing <laughs> thanks alex um okay so i think finley's hand has gone back up yet so um on to finley hello Oh, you've just gone to muted. Let's see if we can. <laughs> you just, I think there you we just go. Me again. Hello. There we go. Um, good. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. So, sorry, just a couple more things I'll just fire at you to okay. note down, I guess. Um, so, around the M11 bridge, uh, I noticed that the. So, I'm just, I was kind of looking at the designs that got put out, what, three, four years ago or something, the original ones. Um, and also some of the stuff that came out during COVID, which was um, the idea of necking down the M11 bridge on the north side to one lane and then using that to get kind of a nice separation between pedestrians and cyclists. So 
I was kind of wondering if that could be considered again, because I think that was quite, I mean, that bridge is never congested because all the traffic backs up in other places. Um, so it feels like taking out a lane there would be quite good because um, it would just give you a much nicer cycle path. And then at the roundabouts at either end, we're still kind of going for at grade um, and staggered ones. And then on the sort of north roundabout, you've got a staggered crossing. So actually that's kind of, I cycle across there and regularly again, and having a stagger crossing there will probably make it less convenient even if it is signalized. Um, because to be honest, if the traffic's clear, you kind of just want to go rather than having to kind of stop, do a very tight left turn, press a button, get to the middle, do it, 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 it's slow. It's a sort of multi-stage process. So I feel like that's kind of a downgrade from the original, kind of, it was almost a downgrade from what we've got. Um, certainly a downgrade. The original proposal, I think even considered grade separation at various points, which would be a st strong preference, if, but I suspect quite expen expensive. So yeah, one thing there, basically, there were some really good designs that started to come out previously on the M11 bridge. What happened to those? Um, secondly, the bulk path thing. I'm kind of looking at this as if you're coming from Cambridge going to Grandchester, the bulk path is a pretty long way round, and you're also in the middle of a field and it's going to be pitch black. So personal safety point of view, that's terrible. I mean, there's a lot of people who do not feel comfortable in the middle of a dark field, which is kind of understandable. Um, and if, if short of putting strong lighting in, which I guess is going to get a lot of objections on on environmental grounds, that path is basically going to be very unfriendly to quite a large poor percentage of people at a lot of times of the year. You know, certainly commute times this time of year, it's pitch black. So kind of that's a problem. But also, I don't, there have been proposals, quite a few proposals to stick a modal filter on Grandchester Road, which kind of gives you a high quality paved, very low traffic route for free, almost, well, the cost of a few planters and signposts, and also would give you a direct access straight into the middle of Grandchester rather than kind of having to do a bit of a loop to get in. So kind of my question there is, given the personal safety issues of taking the primary route across the middle of open farmland, and given the fact that Grandchester, closing Grandchester Road would add something like a minute to car travel time if you were driving. Would it not make sense to just spend the money on improving cycle paths through the middle of Grandchester and then filtering Grandchester Road? So yeah, two questions. Barton Road, but the M11 bridge, there were some good designs previously, grade separation, better junctions, taking a lane out, what happened to those? And then Grandchester, why don't we just take the main route through Grandchester, filter the road? And I think that would be a much more direct and safer and more welcoming route for a lot of people. Okay, um, so in terms of those questions, I think I'll go uh, first to Alex to talk about the M11 side of things, and then I'll come to Lisa to talk through uh, the kind of Grantchester points and the bought path points, because um, I'm conscious that this is also picked up uh, kind of in the Hazlingfield Greenway work that I know Lisa and, and Alex have been involved in as well. So hopefully we can give you a, a pretty thorough answer on that. So Alex, do you want to just pick up um, the points which were around um, uh, the bridge itself across the M11 and uh, kind of removal potentially of, of uh, one of the lanes uh, on that section, as well as the actual crossings of the M11 uh, roundabouts. Um, I think specifically we talked about the north roundabout uh, Finley was highlighting. Um, so kind of where did we get to with, um, I think there was grade separation at one point and, and also the kind of arrangement that we're putting forward now. Um, and then I'll come to Lisa to talk uh, about kind of the Grantchester sections. So Alex. So yeah, on the on the lane drop on the M11 bridge itself, um, yeah, you're very right that the constraint in in those locations are the two junctions rather than um, the the two lanes across the bridge. So that was picked up by by the design team as an opportunity, and we're exploring that with national highways and. Um, and the the county highways team as a as an active opportunity that we'd like to explore a bit more as you say it'll provide opportunity for a buffer between traffic and again reduce you know give us a good good running width as well as space away from from the cars so you don't feel the the wind as you as you cycle or walk over the bridge um so i think that's that's definitely a, a possibility that we're exploring um so on the roundabouts so there's a high pressure gas main that was uncovered in our investigations um, along the what was that eastern side of um, of the M11 roundabout, um, which sort of 
precluded, um, you know, not, not that it was going to be convenient to install, but that the gas main disruption would make it extremely difficult sort of. Um, they're also very disruptive uh, in terms of construction methodology. So part of the, the two prong review, part of our feasibility was looking at what it would take to relocate the gas main, work around it. Um, and then the second aspect of that was what the construction phasing would, would need to be at that junction. So that option required sort of full reconstruction of the whole roundabout, and that would end up being sort of in a staged fashion, a probably six month, a year long program of, of temporary traffic lights and, and so on. Um, so on, on sort of the cost of that construction phasing and the earthworks required, um, it exceeded the budget that was outlined for that section. Um, so that's on that side. And then on the other side, on the north, on the north slip lane, um, it's, it's the grades as, as you fall down towards the, the Polo Club. So there's no sort of good place to land uh, an underpass on that side as well. So um, while I kind of agree on, on the signalized crossings, um, particularly the staggered one, um, it's sort of, it's what it takes to get a, a safe and separated in time crossing of those locations. And it will be, uh, you know, at certain times where the traffic is low um, and you can probably, you know, make a dash across quite quickly, it will introduce an element of delay. Um, but sort of the benefit to that is again, for those users who aren't comfortable, even on low traffic days, even with a, you know, revised geometry down to one lane or something, uh, making the dash, not sure if someone's indicating to come off the M11 or they've just left their indicator on or, um, you know, they're, they're surprising you by coming around the corner with a bit of extra speed. So, um, they're all sort of avenues that we've explored and considered um, what it would take to deliver those options and um, how robust the, the sort of alternative is. Um, there's still a bit of difficulty in that staggered crossing option and that we still have to consider what the queues at those will look like, you know, managing any queues if they build back onto the roundabout, for instance, is a sort of road safety risk that we now have to look at in more detail at the next stage. So um, we're almost not not out of the woods uh, yet with that with that option. Um, so um, yeah, but no, definitely take your take your comments on board, and um, yeah, uh, hopefully that answers most your questions. Yeah, no, ga gas mains always sound like a. I'm always amazed in this country how much infrastructure we seem to just lose on a regular basis. But uh, um, yeah, I think the stagger crossing, I think maybe, maybe the, the, one of the comments is it, even if it does have to be at grade is just there's some very, very sharp right angles there, um, which I imagine would be difficult to navigate on a, um, you know, cargo bike or something like that. Um, so I think it would just, even if it is still at grade, if the if it can be made so it's not these really sharp corners leading into it because i've just i have a cargo trike and they're a pain to get around corners like that and the more you know if we want more people to use these things we need to make it kind of not a faff i guess the other one is um you know do you free yourself up with some more space by altering the geometry of the entries and exits to that roundabout because I, I mean they're still very kind of high it's a very high speed design um so is there you know is there a potential to kind of neck down the width of the roundabout circulatory bit and kind of have narrower exits so some of the crossings you just have a bit more space to play with there um i mean yeah the other sort of more blue sky thing i guess is uh did you consider going up rather than down and just go having a cycle bridge straight over that second roundabout but uh i suspect that wouldn't be the cheapest option well i don't know probably we, still we, cheaper than a tunnel. We, we actually did look at that as well um Ooh. but indeed uh the, the costs were um slightly prohibitive uh and you know the the impact from again visual and all those other things uh, that started to come into it and you know in terms of where we were uh, the best situation the best outcome was was what we're looking at uh, now um, mm -hmm. Alex do you want to come back on those other points that Finley just made yeah so, do you want to bring the drawing up as well maybe Alex just to if in case that oh. helps you talk through any of the points yeah on, uh, if, you so... got, if you can do AutoCAD live that would be very good <laughs> No, I've got the PDF. Yeah, it's too it's too late in the evening for that. Um, yeah, so lowering the speed down to forty does give us a chance. Um, and 
that'll be part of the sort of detailed geometry review once we get the topo survey back. Um, so that is an opportunity that we can explore. The, the key driver is the trying to eke out the queuing space here. So when you've got a red light there, making sure that only sort of in the extreme circumstances do you get people queuing back. Um, mm. So once we get the modeling results back to look at how much of an issue that that is, you know, it could be that it's very rare, you know, we'll only have to accommodate one or two cars, which means we can bring that back and bring that one back and then we've got a bit more space. There's also potential for, I guess, widening that whole area there through land agreements, but that's a bit of a question mark as well. Um, but yeah. certain, certainly once we start looking at the detail, you know, things like, um, yeah, the, just the detail of the sweat path and, and how that's going to feel to use it, um, it will be part of that next stage once we've got the certainty around what we're dealing with in terms of lane widths and embankments and things like that. So I think even this section needs to be um, banked up. Oh, and you can see this dotted line there, that's the gas main. Oh, is that the gas main? Oh, that's very, that's conveniently located. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think I was looking at some of the original pros and one, and one of them, as you say, was just move, like shrinking the entire roundabout because it is a beast, um, but that's not, and then you gain a lot of space, but that's just not, not cheap um yeah that that because that's that's required so shrinking the roundabouts required to deliver the underpass um but we did look at an option where it was shrinking the roundabout just to get a straight across crossing sort of up here you know single stage nice and straight um but again just the cost and disruption of redoing that roundabout and then not to even get a, the payoff of an underpass um it was very sort of mm. you know, nearing the cost of one of the green, one of the whole greenways, um, but yeah, it is a it is a key point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think yeah, if you're doing upgrade, I think just making sure that from a cycling point of view, it feels you know if it were to be completely clear, if you could do that kind of just like nice sweep through rather than the kind of zigzag that we've got at the moment, I think is the the key kind of thing because I just yeah. I it, I don't know it's the ultimate as you said we want to get more people cycling and if we're kind of dealing with you know if this is kind of what because these aren't going to be cheap schemes and they're not going to get improved and made you know they're not going to get improved for many years afterwards and if it's kind of a oh yeah that's a pain of a cycle route because you've got all of these just awkward crossings it's kind of a shame especially given the huge amounts of space dedicated to cars nearby um <laughs> you know i would definitely take on board that feedback um I'm just Sorry, conscious yeah. there's there, no no there's there's a uh, a question in the in the chat which actually refers to the same job like the same area um which which is basically at peak times this is from Myron at peak times the congestion from Coton roundabout into Cambridge can be horrendous you're reducing the Coton traffic to to one lane and therefore reducing M11 bridge to one lane would could would or could cause uh, more traffic congestion question mark I think the answer to that uh, goes back to what Alex has said about um you know the, the transport modeling that we need to do to to look at the the impact uh, and you know at, the, at this stage um you know we, we are aware that we still need to do that modeling um and we will need to agree with kind of the county council uh highways team you know the the proposals that, that we have um alex do you have anything more to add to that um the the lane in question is sort of this one so i think okay. what um was it john that mentioned it oh, sorry finley finley yeah um was ta me. yeah taking out this lane um so that would be heading into into cambridge so um to our knowledge this one doesn't experience too much queue back and there will there'll be marginal um impact to the cars because they, they kind of come off the roundabout in one lane anyway okay Thank you. Um, so just to go back to the question that Finley asked about um, Grantchester. Uh, so I think there was a question about the modal filter um, and uh, why don't we look at that? And also the, the kind of safety of the bulk path um, and the use of that. So Lisa, do you want to respond to those points? Yep, yeah, sure. So just probably worth clarifying that the main route from um, Cambridge into Grantchester would be via the Hazingfield Greenway. Um, 
so oh thank you very much Alex. so the Hazingfield Greenway is proposed to come down Grantchester Road where hopefully you can see Alex is running his cursor along so we're proposing um, a predominantly off-road um, route from the rugby club down to Grantchester it would all be is proposed to all be off-road um, so that would be the primary link if you were cycling um, or walking in and out of, of Cambridge to Grantchester, it would be that route via the Hazingfield Greenway. Um, and in terms of the modal filter, so that was one of the options I think that was looked at in the previous consultation. There were a number of options that were looked at, including yeah, modal filters, one way, Grantchester Road, um, yeah, bus only, all sorts of all sorts of options. Um, and I don't think in terms of the sort of public response, they they weren't that popular. Um, so they didn't have they didn't receive sort of strong support. So I think the option that's been taken forward was the one that had the most support from from that consultation. Um, and that's what the team has been working on is this off road link down to Grantchester. Um, probably worth saying that in terms of the engagement that we recently did on the Hazlingfield route, there's still um, a real mix of opinion on what should be done in that link um, and the Grantchester sort of section of the Hazlingfield route. So a joint assembly paper was published um, last week, which sets out the engagement findings. And we are actually proposing to go back out and do a further formal public consultation on the Grantchester section. Uh, next summer to try and get that clearer steer of of what people would like to see there so just think it's worth caveating that that isn't um sort of uh, signed off yet that section running to Grantchester. i think just yeah, uh, just to, just to go on the bork path as well um so uh just interestingly a lot a lot of the the people we spoke to in kind of Grantchester were often saying actually we'd rather you just use the Bork path rather than go through Grantchester um so uh, I appreciate that's not addressing your your question about safety but actually from a lot of the feedback we got there was a lot of preference for that route um so Lisa do you want to just pick up on the safety aspect of that as well yeah so I guess you know as mentioned lots of the feedback that we've had to date has from that Hazlingfield engagement has been that, as Thomas mentioned, people would prefer us to just do the bulk path route instead of the Grantchester Road option. Um, and in terms of safety and security, I guess that's where the team are sort of looking into options, particularly around, as we've mentioned earlier, the lighting. So what can be done there? We're looking at sort of the solar studs for wayfinding, etc. Um, and making sure that vegetation sort of cleared back so visibility is improved. Um, but I, I mean, the ideal situation would be to have both routes so that the user has the choice of whether they would like to come down the Grantchester Road um, off road section or use the bulk path. Um, and potentially you might get different users using those, um, depending on, as you say, time of day, season, etc. But, you know, the ideal situation would be to have both routes um, so that the user could choose. OK, thanks. For that. Yeah, that's. Um... I know. I, I take the point of uh, I take the point of consultations and stuff. I, I well, I would be curious to know, and I, it might be detailed somewhere. You might know, off the top of your head, is kind of were the reasons for not putting stuff through Grantchester because we, you know, yeah, basically we don't like change, and you're going to put a cycle path through, and all these bloody people in like her are going to come past and ruin everything, which is the response you often get to a lot of these things. And similarly with the preferred proposal for Grantchester Road was that people who cycle intent, you know, constantly to get around saying they would prefer to go the off road route, or is it, we don't want to close the road because it would mean we have to drive an extra minute. Um, look, <laughs> my immediate thoughts that come there. And also, you know, I think the thing is we keep talking about money and certain schemes aren't going ahead because of money. I presume it is a lot cheaper just to stick a bollard in the middle of Grantchester Road than to, you know, do all the land negotiations required for an off-road route and I think that's kind of the I don't know if I if I was uh well probably wouldn't be a very good public official because I get de-elected almost immediately but um you know my my attitude to this would be well the cheapest and most effective way of getting a fully paved truck car free route is to stick a bo bollard on Grantchester Road that would free up a lot of money and time presumably to build other things where that's not an option and you know the cars have to go one minute extra and you put a path through the middle of Grantchester and it's going to make everything a lot safer because at the moment the thing is I think with a lot of these routes they kind of 
we run into the same issue it's where you get to a village and then it goes to a quiet ro quiet road through the middle which basically means everyone's on the road and realistically the people in the car are going to push people out of the way you know cycling through Grandchester is it's fine it's not particularly nice um so it strikes me that the most you know we should be quite bullish on this and say well actually yeah the center of these villages are the dangerous bits Grandchester road is a great route to cycle on if there weren't any cars on it and if there were car if you just shut it then cars could go up Coton Road I mean I think it's literally a minute extra on Google Maps so I know what I'm coming at is just surely we should surely given how tight money is on everything we should be taking the cheapest and most efficient route for this and then you can kind of scrap any of the peripheral stuff and you've got a good route sorry that's kind of it's, it's no. a blunt way of putting it but it just why why should we bend over to accommodate people moaning about not being able to drive directly to everything no that that's fine um i think you know from from our perspective uh you know there was a one of the options that was put forward from a technical side was that modal filter uh and and that was consulted on uh and the results of that were were kind of voted on from a political perspective and the politicians decision that we we've been told to take forward is that offline route on on hazling uh, on grandchester road uh, for the hazling field greenway so uh, you know I, I appreciate the, the feedback you're giving finley but um you know from, from our perspective as officers that's that's our our role is to deliver what the political decisions are um and that's yeah. that's what we're doing yes. in this situation yeah no i get that it's uh it's gonna sneak out you must have some bollards lying around it's gonna bolt one in over <laughs> i can see if it works properly <laughs> save everyone a uh, lot of time uh, yeah um uh, yeah i'm not sure I'd, I'd keep my job if i did do that um okay uh do you have any uh kind of any further questions finley um i think no i think that's uh most of the, the other one is when we talked about sealed surfaces and accommodating tree roots is that using like um a hard you know tarmac surface or equivalent um with like a root cell underneath or is it because i worry anytime i hear like natural surface i think okay so mud slick or no, it's not going to be that no it, we're not, we are looking at sealed services alex you could probably elaborate a little bit more yeah yeah the exact details yeah again are in this next stage we seem to be leaving ourselves a lot of work to do in this next stage but um yeah that'll be one of the one of the solutions other things could be like flexible paving uh rubber crumb resin bound gravel that sort of thing where it's got a bit more movement a bit more give to it doesn't need as much um sub base improvement around roots and things like that has aeration for the for the trees so that they that they're not um damaged you know or the, the, their roots are suffocated all, all things like that will have to be considered with the arboriculturalists um it may be that some of the the sort of less um less what's the word? not not less valuable but like um self-seeded uh scrubby trees um might need to be trimmed back uh, and then to leave the more established and, and sort of healthier, more um, contributory, contributory trees there and achieve the sort of path width that we're looking to achieve. Um, it may be that we remained uh, with some pinch points that just have to be managed um, in other aspects with sort of signage or warning or, or um, whatever it may be. But that'll all sort of be balanced to look at um, exactly what's needed to get through that, that sort of COPS. Cool. Okay. Um, that's a similar thing on the surfaces. Um, have you allocated any funding to the Barton Road? Because the Barton Road Cycleway is just, you know, it's a shared use path from the uh, Haggis. I didn't realise it was called Haggis Farm. Haggis Farm Junction sort of into Cambridge. I don't know if any of you have cycled out there recently, but the whole thing's falling down the bank, basically. Um, there's massive linear cracks the whole way along it. They resurfaced it a couple of years ago and it's fallen down the bank again. Um, so I don't know if, any, if part of this work is some like remit because if it's going to be widened as well, I don't know if it is, and you know to get enough of a buffer. Um, I I think there's probably some fairly something needs to go on there because otherwise I think it's all going to fall down the side of the. There's a big ditch, so I don't know if you've uh, got anything sort of scheduled in there to kind of uh, shore up the bank. So so yeah, um, that is one. So that is part of the greenway, and we will be improving uh, that section. Uh, and at the next stage, I mean, we've already started doing the surveys that Alex has highlighted, and we are aware of the work that would, was needed kind of last year because it was falling 
falling down. Um, in fact, we saw it on our site visit. Uh, but yes, so it will be picked up uh, as part of this this next stage of works. And one of the things we're looking at is whether or not we take some of the the carriageway basically and, and widen that way rather than off the back. Yeah, that makes sense because it's a fast road. Yeah. Um, I'm conscious there's another question in the chat as well, yes. which is um, from Myron. Uh, so this is about, uh, is the section from Barton Village to Combaton Village cycle shared path not being improved? Um, I think we uh, answered this earlier, but Lisa, you could just kind of repeat what you said earlier about that section. Um, so the section between Barton and Combaton. Yes, yeah. So I think on the on the plan that's on the screen at the moment, you can see where the Barton Greenway finishes in Barton, um, which is where the shared use path then starts. Um, in terms of improvements, we are not currently looking to improve that section there and that route. Um, towards Combaton, there's a section of it which has already been improved. Um, so we're not looking to do that because that section has been improved. Um, there's a link at the end, I think I mentioned at the start, there's a link at the end um, to the south of Long Road. So from Long Road East, um, which we are covering in the Combaton Greenway. Um, and we're looking there to put an off-road facility in the field there to provide that link um, where there's currently a really like unattractive narrow section there um, next to the road. We're looking to provide a new link for that section. Um, so that will provide the link between sort of Combaton and Barton, but in terms of the actual Greenway remit, the Barton one finishes, as mentioned, in the village um, just north of the, the pond, and the Combaton one just covers that um, link to the south and the east of Long Road. Brilliant. So hopefully that explains that. Thanks, Lisa. Um, okay. We don't have any more questions in the Q and A. We have Finley's hand up. I'm not sure if that's a new oh, or an old hand. I think my hands remained up. I'm just trying to think. I'm just, just ticking off any points. Oh, um, one other thing is, sorry, continuous footways. So, so along Barton Road as you come into Cambridge, yes. there's a lot of crossings. Some of them, particularly the one that goes onto, I want to say, Grange Road, where you've kind of got is it Grange Road. Yeah, you've kind of got a crossing and then a uh it's a bit uh, yeah there's there are some here yeah so that bit there where your laser pointer is that is what what is going on there it's like it's that is it's a piece of abstract art that junction that design at the moment there's so many like i i don't know i i, I think uh you because you've got the uh pedestrian the pelican crossing or are they pelicans nowadays anyway you've got the pelican crossing then you've kind of got a big chunk of uh shared space and then you've kind of got all sorts of different surface textures going on at the junction it's kind of the you know the design priority is not completely clear because you've got the path continues across but then you've got curbs and you've got different textures it's all kind of yeah just general comment really is on all of these sort of pseudo continuous things it really should just be you know continuous i don't know how you get the uh i guess that's trying to integrate the current crossing in there but it's it's a bit confusing yeah, sorry, it's not too clear on the PowerPoint. Where are we? Yeah, there we go. That, that thing. It's it's uh, colourful. Mm. So we've got the raised table here. The colour of the paving, you know, that, that's a, a hatch, I guess, a, a colour that the CAD designers have used. So um, it could be that the, the cycle portions, one color and the, the pedestrian portions, another color that might come out in the detail, but. Um, it's just, you then break into the shared space bit and it's just a bit of a mishmash. Yeah. Things. I yeah. don't think, I, I, if I was, I mean, looking at that, it's kind of, it's not, I can see what your, what the intention is of where people are meant to go, but like, it's just very confusing. Yes. You know, because you've got that big red, um, is that tactile paving, the red kind of L shape there? Yeah. Um, which you'll, I mean, and also like the two, I like the two signs. Is that a start and end of shared use space by, by chance? Yeah. So, they're, um... What, what you want, like two meters from each other? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just kind of, there are a few things like that along the, I mean, the whole length really of the road, which is just a bit kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I, it, I'm, what, it, what's the point? It's a lot of, lot of yeah, a lot of effort. 
Yeah. I, it, could, it could all be cleaned up. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so in terms of which, in terms of what you'd prefer to see in, in your view, I guess, would that be to continue the, the path through there and have sort of another, another crossing or? Yeah, I think, um, I think the best thing to do with Peter. I don't know if it was just me, but I think we just lost Finley there. Just as he was telling us what we needed to do. Finley, I don't know if you can still hear us at all. Okay. Um, I think so. So what I think we will do, if Finley's okay with that, um, if we will kind of put um, our email address up um so finley can kind of send some detailed uh, kind of questions um mm. and i think you know I, I take on board what he's saying about uh, that junction in terms of it's you know it's quite complicated in how it looks um i think the existing arrangement is also you know shared and then into cycling uh, and is you know is is complicated in itself uh, although possibly not quite as complicated as this maybe looks um so for example you know do we keep the shared use that currently is in place going across that road uh, on a raised table rather than having the segregation. Um, I mean, the segregation starts a bit further on at the moment um, and potentially, you know, changing that would, would add confusion and, and maybe we can just make what's currently there a bit, a bit more um, clear. Um, yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. I guess in, in response and maybe for the benefit of others on the call, um, in terms of the stage of these designs, these are sort of first off the press. So there will be a process of, of cleanup. Um, you probably see, you know, there's a lot of line marking and things like that, which, um, you know, the decision whether to have a centre line along along the uh, road, for instance, is, is one decision that's still sort of undefined um, based on feedback. And then likewise, this will get brought to, um, you know, visually impaired user groups and, um, uh, user groups for for other sort of um, accessibility uh, needs. Um, they'll all sort of review it and then we'll look at sort of what's um, what's going to be safest for the the biggest portion of of the public. Um, and sometimes it doesn't result in the in the tidiest arrangements. Um, but in other scenarios, we definitely will be able to do. You know, the the option here might be that we're able to clean it up and just um, have a sort of aisle in there instead of uh, the shared use space. But um, yeah, okay. that's... Uh, oh, that. Sorry, I just, I just managed to, I, my headphones, the audio and everything just dropped off. I wasn't ignoring, <laughs> no. ignoring you guys. Um, yeah, no, I, I take the point of there's a lot of different things to consider here. It's just kind of, I, I think there's, yeah, with things like that, you, it's, you think, well, what, what are people reasonably going to do? And I know, you know, when people cycle along, you often see this where you have like end, of, you know, end of cycle path, shared use start, all of these signs within about two meter, two meters of each other, and no, everyone ignores them because you're not going to, you don't, you're not going to change how you behave on the, in those two meters because it just doesn't make sense. Um, and I think there's kind of an element of how will, how, what does a design intend people to do, and what will people actually do? Yeah. Um, and if, if the layout is too kind of complicated or, you know, I think uh, people who, if you know, if you know the design of these things, you know, what all of these different things imply, you kind of would, you tend to assume that, oh, well, people are going to behave in this way. And it really, you, you look at that, the way this junction currently works, and there's probably technically a set of road markings and things that you're meant to follow correctly. And it, to be honest, it's just a free for all because it's a melee. So if you, you know, if it's not, if it's not very, very clear how the junction should flow, then people are just going to kind of make it up. Yeah. And yeah. definitely that's that, that really micro feedback of, of real regular users. You know, I don't cycle down this, this um, road all that often, but um, yeah, it, if there is that feedback, like there's current issues, uh, we heard from a counselor that there's currently issues with, um, you know, drivers, for instance, not appreciating that the junction's right there, that, that could, mean that there's wider things to resolve with not just the Greenways team but the, the county and, and signals team um, in terms of legacy road safety issues um, and certainly if there's a, a, 
a, I guess a preferred approach that we can establish maybe through talking with Cam Cycle, then we'll look to take that feedback on board. Um, yeah, it's the, 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 I mean, so for an example, that that rate, there's currently it's sort of a raised tape. It's kind of raised. Again, it's quite ambiguous at the moment, but it's... cars basically park straight on top of it. So what actually happens is you just end up with people just sort of weaving in and out and around the traffic. And also, the, the, actually, one thing I would highlight here is, and it might still be an issue in this design, is it's really quite, there's a, it's a really blind corner there. Um, so if you're cycling along and then someone comes out of Grange Road, on a bike, often people are on the pavement because it gets, again, the, there's the cycle lanes there I don't actually think are wide enough to even put the bike symbol in on Grange Road. Um, so people tend to be on the pavement. And so basically there's a lot of people just, there's a lot of people appearing on this junction very suddenly um, combined with the crossing uh, combined with it being a very busy route you end up with a lot of it, there, there's a lot of conflict in this junction um, so the, any design needs to kind of minimize that wherever possible um, I don't know if moving the pedestrian crossing somewhere because I think that's the other thing you've got people, cyclists coming out of Grange Road kind of joining the pavement coming into what is you know the shared use area but then you've also got pedestrians crossing so there's kind of this all of the everyone's kind of going everywhere at once mm. um and also i mean yeah it, it's interesting the other interesting thing here is that i guess that the pavement width here is i think so that'd be a 1.5 meter on those drawings and then a 2.43 meter bi-directional cycle path that's cozy um you i don't you know you might i think you i suspect you'd end up if, if someone's pushing a push chair for example they're going to have to walk it and someone comes the other way they're going to walk into the cycle path so this whole area is i think i can see the, the desire to kind of create formalized separations because it is a very busy route but i do con get concerned with the whole design that ever, there's too much going on it's too compact and people just won't use it as intended yeah, I think there's a Sorry, level yeah. that we're uh, so, so there's there's a couple of things. So firstly, there's another question. So I need to go to, to Mike in a second. Um, but uh, I think, you know, that's part of being picked up at the next level of detailed design. Um, you know, obviously what we put here is is based on kind of uh, kind of uh, ordnance survey mapping. Um, and what we want to do is that we've done topographical surveys recently uh, that will feed into the next design where we we'll try and squeeze out kind of as much width as we can whilst taking into account kind of the the trees and things like that that are, are down here so um i think just to to say finally that you know this is what we can see at the moment but that's not to say that this is the the final final solution and we will look to kind of squeeze out a bit more width um i'm yeah. gonna just go to so, sorry finley i'm just gonna no, go no, to no, Mike sorry, good. sorry thomas i just wanted to add as well that the team is also aware um there's a petition about the safety here at this junction so we've been made aware of that so we are looking into the issues raised in that as well um and trying to consider those in the next stage of design brilliant thanks lisa uh mike uh if we can get mike unmuted um and then answer, ask your question mike so you should be on my muted now oh thank you um i've got concerns about the coton roundabout um i note that the um, crossing on the slip road on the northwest side of the m11 bridge is at right angles to the road which is ideal but there's no indication that that occurs on the crossing on Coton Road. The other point about Coton Road is that quite a lot of cyclists will be coming from Coton and they need to, to join that, that point. And there is a problem here with the slip road coming in from the left from the M11. Um, can these matters be considered and um, better approach lines drawn up effectively? Uh, so I think we're talking about the other roundabout, Alex. Um, so the northern roundabout. Uh, northern. Yeah, yes. yeah, and we're talking about um, kind of the the, the crossings uh, and the angle of them, and also kind of people coming from the, the top of this diagram. Uh, so uh, coming along from Coton, uh, getting past the M11 slip road that's joining uh, here, uh, and then um, coming down. So Alex, are you okay to come back on those those queries? Yes. So, yeah, part of, of that sort of refinement in, in plans um, will be a lot. It's, uh, it's called a cycling level of service assessment. And that 
part of that assessment is looking at all of the side roads and things like that. And, you know, if you were on the carriageway coming from this direction uh, and how, how good, I guess, is your access onto um, an adjacent facility like this? And is there a need for, you know, a drop curb and off ramp and, and some um, signage, which could be provided, you know, a, a very little issue. Um, so is that the movement that, that you were talking about rejoining on onto the the track yes that's correct yeah i'm also worried that um cyclists will tend to move out as they pass the slip road and uh, the m11 slip road and join the crossing directly um in the middle stage i know that's not really um allowed but um i'm sure it will happen mm yeah so that's got its own issues no they're they're fair points that we can take on board um you know the the probably the desirable option is for them to stay keep on the left and be predictable and and come up here and push the button but yeah obviously there's a, a sort of latent risk of of people just continuing to to do that or preferring to as it as it's also narrowed down as part of our proposal um it does make that sort of right turn movement onto this side easier so we'll have to sort of review the risk of that um in the plans i think that's absolutely what i would do that's absolutely what i would do if you were cycling down there because pulling out and then coming back across it's you want to get out of the, that's a fast slip road there you want to get out of the traffic as quickly as possible so if you're taking a right turn and you can just duck off then it's safer to do that so why wouldn't you like again this kind of goes back to the how the people think when they're on a bike is and how would I, how would you do that? It's like, yeah, you can take a left, like pick your bike up, turn around, press a button, or you can just go right and not do that. So people will do that because it's a lot quicker and probably safer. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take take that feedback on board. Um, I'm very conscious my entire laptop is just frozen. So nothing in terms of a screen is changing, but I'm hoping you can still hear me uh, as a minimum. Um, yeah, and someone just confirmed that. You. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's great. My my screen is currently completely frozen as uh, on everything. So if my laptop dies, then Lisa, can I just ask that you help me by wrapping up the meeting? Of if course. if I suddenly disappear, yep. thank you. Um. So I also, of course, cannot see whether or not there are any further questions or hands up. So uh, a, Lisa, can you just help course. me out, please? Yes. A question in the um chat. What is the budget for this scheme? Um, so the Barton Greenway has a current budget allocation of £10 million, um, pounds, and that was included in the executive board sort of reports and signed off previously, but that is the allocated budget for the Barton route. Brilliant. Thank you, Lisa. Um, are there any other further questions in the box or in the um, uh, any other further questions, uh, hands raised? I can't see any hands raised or any other questions in the question box at the moment, the chat box. Okay, well, let's give it. I'll give you one one last one, sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, is, I, so I'm just scrolling around the map and trying to remember all the stuff I thought of. Um, Rand, the junction from, is it Lammas Land? The, Grand, the one where it's like Barton Road, Grand, uh, Newnham Road, oh, it's the bit in Newnham. Um, on the corner just coming out of cambridge uh yeah the newnham newnham road junction yeah that one that oh, there one. we go that one yeah um original proposals i saw a few years ago again called for necking down uh Grandchester road the one on the south south of that the bottom of that picture bottom right um called for necking that down to a single lane and then so doing one way and then putting in a bit more of a junction because what currently people do is they basically that kind of uh, little kind of shared use bump or whatever you want to call it. It's just a bit of pavement. People come up on the speed hump that's currently there, cut across right, go across driftway, and then join the path um, on uh, Lambeth, that yeah, on the top right there. Uh, that that's how people take that junction because you, there's no otherwise there's not really a good way from coming from Newnham onto that onto there. Uh, so. I, yeah it doesn't really that that design doesn't really work 
for people yeah. coming out of there? Because you, you, if, if I was to try and take a right to join that path, what, what am I meant to do? Still um, provide that feedback if you can, but from this plan, uh, and I apologise, I wasn't uh, involved in it, but I think that there's an early start for cyclists here. So they'll get an early green light to be able to make a right turn in their own time ahead of the traffic. Gotcha. Yeah. The, again, though, I think the natural thing is if there's not a car coming the other way, what people currently do is you go up on the, the speed hump, which might just be cut off in this, I think, just to the, south of there. So I think, yeah, where your laser pointer is, there's a speed hump there, which brings you up level with the pavement. Uh, what people tend to do is you go up onto the speed hump, go onto the pavement and then stay off around the corner. It means you avoid the whole junction. That's the desire line there, um, because it, otherwise you have to go through what is quite a unpleasant corner which again often gets backed up anyway because people uh, people always think that they can get through and can't and then block mm -hmm. the crossing so the desire line is to go is to cut that corner off um and that's not really accommodated there there was an original design that i saw the design in the leaflet two years ago was um make that road make Manchester street one way and there was actually then room to accommodate that desire line by having a path of a cycle path you know, an actual proper one there uh, that then joined up on the top right and across the driftway. But that's what people will do there mm, because okay. it's safer. Again, it, it's it's not what you're meant to do. It's probably against the rules, but it's a lot safer than actually going through the junction. Okay, great. Uh, can you note that, Susan? We'll send that over to um, the county team. Yeah, and I was going to say, Finley, I assume you will be filling in an engagement survey, but please make sure you do so that we've got oh, I will, um, I will. good, good, good. <laughs> so we've got this all noted as well in there. Is there a word yeah. limit, Susan? Oh, I, I, you know, I was I'll just have thinking to, it might be I'll better. Get it ring, I'll get it ring bound and send it to you guys. <laughs> you might have to email. Yeah, you're not. Uh, are you part of Chem Cycle or are you? Um, I, I, I haven't really. I am, um, but I haven't really been active with them for a while. I, I did fire off a huge pile of comments to them um as part of the as part of the when this particular one came up just because i go there so use it so much um but no i'm not this is not official capacity this is just i cycle this way a lot so I, yeah no i so, have opinions no that's useful to know because i guess yeah will will we hear from you again with cam cycle or yeah if we take your comments on board as a member of the public which is yeah great cool Okay, thank you. And we've got one more um, question, comment in the chat pane. Um, this will cost everyone in Cambridge £700 on average. Is that really fair? Have you publicised this figure? So yes, that budget allocation of um, £10 million was publicised in the um, executive board paper that was taken to the board in October 2020. So it's all online and it's in the paper. Um, and the request was made to the board to approve that outline budget um, at that meeting. So that is all publicly available. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, I can't see any more raised hands or questions. Thank you, Finley. Comment there. Thanks, everyone. Glad to hear it's constantly evolving. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, OK, well, I think it's probably just down to me to say thank you so much for dialing in tonight and giving us all your time and your feedback. I know um, Susan and Alex and the team and myself found that really useful. Um, Susan's taken lots of notes, as have I actually. Um, so we'll make sure that we feed those through to the design team. Um, and please do fill in a feedback survey to give us your feedback sort of formally as well. And hopefully some of you can drop into our event next Thursday in Barton as well. So thank you again, everyone. Really appreciate your time. Thanks very much.